Hey, man, we're having a great week talking about, uh, you know, doubt, you know, God's thief to, to God's greater blessing. Because I really want, I, be, I really believe God really wants you to walk in the fullness of the blessing. And we are blessed. You know, I'm not trying to say something that we got to conjure up, but we got to just to receive it and act on it and declare it. You know, we're blessed coming in and blessed going out. You know, we're empowered to prosper and we're anointed uh, to win. And so we've been using Mark chapter 11, can of, can of our uh, like a text scripture for this week or foundation scripture. It says, have faith in God or the God kind of faith. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so we've been saying this all week that the greatest enemy uh, to our faith is doubt or unbelief. And so we've been looking at different scriptures, different things of how to get the weeds of doubt out of our lives. Yesterday we talked about we got to really get doubt out by knowing the will of God regarding a situation, regarding healing, finances, anything about, about our lives. We have to make sure we know what the will of God says about it. And today we're going to talk about we got to overcome belief by rejecting fear. You know, Philippians 4, 6 says, do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in every Thing, continue to make your wants known to God. So the basis of all unbelief really is fear. If you don't deal with it, it will begin to work on your mind and you begin to question, it begin to question the word of God. Do you know that it is impossible to worry and to trust God, you know, at the same time? Worry is really a form of Unbelief, it causes us to doubt God's love and his ability to come through for us when we need him most. And so Satan can put the pressure on us over, our, it could be financial pressure, pressure, excuse me, or, or anything that, be, that, that goes beyond the seeing realm. He can squeeze us over money, particularly if you're in the ministry, because it threatens to stop uh, the very thing that God told you to do. All doubt, all unbelief, all the pressure uh, it's fear-based. So any, kind, any, any doubt you have, any fear you have, I'm saying any unbelief you have, any pressure you're dealing with is really based in fear. So fear will keep you from the promises of God, even if you know what they are. So the Lord was grieved by the Israelites when he had, when he had delivered them out of Egypt, but it wasn't the sins of adultery or stealing that grieved him. No, it was the sin of unbelief. And they could not enter into the promised land. Guess what? It's because of unbelief. So not because God didn't want them there, not because they weren't so unworthy, not because he was trying to teach them something, it's because of their unbelief. Come on, I really want us to make sure we're doing our part to believe God. I don't want it to be where we're a sense knowledge kind of thing, but, you know, we got to believe it in our heart, and it's got to come out of our mouths that Jesus is Lord, that we're blessed coming in, that healing is part of uh, uh, my, my, my covenant relationship. God wants me blessed. He wants me uh, uh, walking in all the fullness of God. We got to believe it. We got to internalize it and we got to get fear out of our lives. So, so God said, rise up, take the land. And all they had to do was believe God and just head in that direction. He had already done all the, the, the people, you know, all, everything had, had been set up for him. But they said, we can't go in there. And the, and the giants in the land are like, and we are like grasshoppers in their sight. Remember Numbers 13, those, those 12 spies went out, 10 came back with an evil report. And we know Joshua and Caleb says, hey, we're well able to overcome it. You know, you are well able to overcome whatever your it is. And so now we have promises too, a promise of entering to God's rest, a promise of being healed, a promise of being prosperous in all things. But unbelief in the form of fear will block it every time. But the, you know what the antidote is for fear? It is to believe. Faith cancels fear. Say that with me. Faith cancels fear. And so remember Jairus, his daughter was sick. And said so when Jairus came to Jesus asking that he come and heal his daughter, others told him, forget about receiving because she's already dead. And that was the world talking. But Jesus told him what? Do not be afraid, only believe. That's Mark chapter 5. Do not be afraid, only believe Jesus was helping him receive healing for his daughter, and he knew fear would cancel out faith. 
while believing will release the miracle working power. Come on, let's believe God for some miracle working power on this Wednesday. And so when a situation comes your way that could invite fear, make the decision no matter what happens, you're going to refuse to fear. When a bad report comes, say out loud, I refuse to fear. You will overcome unbelief by rejecting the spirit of fear in your life. And so if you mess up, just don't speak doubt, just repent. Don't let unbelief be the last word about the situation. Simply say, I negate those words in Jesus' name. I believe I'm out of debt. I believe I'm receiving every bill paid. I believe I'm made healed and whole and well right now in Jesus' name. Fear be gone. Come on, join me tomorrow, man, as we talk more about this, getting rid of doubt and walking in the blessing of God.